You know, I've been thinking about doing some hot tent camping for a few years now. It seems to be a very popular and it really would be nice to extend my camping season that way. The reason I've kind of hesitated is basically the cost. Both the stoves and the tents can really rack up the dollars. So I've been looking at budget stoves and budget tents for a little while now, thinking that if I liked the concept of hot tent camping and I thought I was going to do it often enough, then I would invest in better gear. Well, when the company Fit and Hot offered to send me one of their hot tent stoves to test out, I agreed. If you're interested in hearing my thoughts on this stove, Keep watching. Before we get started, I just want to thank the company 2 Auto Tool for sending me this fit and hot wood stove so that I could share it with you. So what I want to accomplish today is a few things. First, I want to go over some basic information on the stove, such as what does it come with, its physical specifications, that type of thing. And then we're going to get it outside and do some testing. But before I do that, there are a few close-ups I want to show you of things that, well, I well, don't, I don't know. We're going to see if they become problems later on. All right, so let's get started with the stove. What does it come with? Well, it comes with the main body of the stove, obviously. It comes with this manual, which is actually pretty good, well laid out. This is the fire grate that goes inside the stove. You're going to see it all like this, all put back together in the stove in a few minutes' time. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, sections of stove pipe for this stove. Now the stove pipe is this long. They're, they range between 11.3 and 11.7 inches. Don't ask me why. Two of the stove pipe sections are a little different. This one has a built-in spark arrestor at the top. I'll give you some close-ups. I have a few comments on that as well. And this section of the stove pipe has the damper, which seems to work pretty good as well. All right, it does have folding carrying handles is the way they are listed as folding carrying handles. But of course, there are also racks that you can run out to the side and lay things on top of. I have a few comments on that as well. The stove does come with this ash rake or fire rake, which has a pointed end on it, which I think serves a couple of purposes, including, well, not just moving things around on the stove, but also maybe for lifting off this plate that separates from the rest of the stove. We'll talk about what that's intended purpose is for. The stove comes with two pieces of glass for the window on the front. They slide into place. There is nothing holding them in place, no screws or anything like that. So uh, something to think about when you're transporting in case you lose one. They uh, say they're an improved version over earlier generations of the stove in that because they're floating loose inside of this window, they're less likely to break. But if you do break one, you get a second one just in case. It has folding legs which fold up for storage. They seem to be doing an okay job. I have a comment on that I want to show you. To lock the stove, there is a split ring on a little lever. I'll give you some close-ups. And the draft control on the front with one of these rotating fan-like arrangements also done with a split ring. All right, let me give you a few specifications for the stove. All right, some of the key features uh, that are advertised for the stove is the fact that everything can fit inside, which of course is something you're looking for for transport, because if you transport things separately from the stove, there's always that risk of losing them. Um, now, this stove comes with what they refer to as a titanium coating on the outside. I don't know, it doesn't look like anything special to me, but the purpose of this titanium coating apparently is when you burn the stove for the first time, it's not supposed to smoke and release fumes like a lot of stoves do. It's always recommended that you burn your wood stove outside of any enclosures like a tent or anywhere else before you bring it inside so that it can off gas basically. Well, I don't know, we're gonna to see today. I'm still gonna to burn this outside without a tent just for that reason. We'll see if it does provide 
or off gas or smoke off as, as you go. Um, it will accommodate 12 inch pieces of wood, which is nice. It's not so short that you have to process your wood down shorter. 12 inches is an average size for putting the wood inside. Okay, specifications, the weight overall, everything put back in the stove will come in at 15.43 pounds, which is seven kilograms. You know, that's not bad. I have seen other stoves not much bigger than this or maybe the same size non-titanium ones weighing literally twice that so not too bad at all overall length front to back from door to the very back is 15.75 inches which is 40.6 centimeters the width is 8 inches which is 20.3 and the height is 8 inches which is 20.3 centimeters all right let's bring the camera in because i want to give you a few close-ups on certain features of the stove all right just before we get started with the close-up, there is one other thing that was included with the stove, and that is this pair of gloves. Uh, rubber, not silicone, over cotton gloves. Uh, I wouldn't use them for handling anything hot, but I would use it maybe for handling the stove itself in terms of sharp edges and that type of thing. I'll try them out. I would probably be using gloves, leather gloves, insulated ones maybe, for working with the stove while it's uh, in use. Okay, I brought the camera in a little closer so that I could give you some close-ups on features specific and ones that I have some concerns about. Yes, I know, I haven't had a fire in it. I really don't know if they're going to be concerns, but you know, just look looking at them. Uh, well, we'll see. All right, so to start with it, let's just take a look at the hinges on the side. So the hinges right here seem to be fairly good. They're small bolts. They have a Phillips screw on the end of them, and well, you know, it doesn't look too bad. Time will tell. I wouldn't call it a heavy-duty uh, hinge system, but it's pop riveted on the in, in the back, and I'm assuming stainless steel pop rivets. Uh, so yeah, well, hopefully we'll see how that works out. Now the inside of the door, this is the latch itself. It has a Phillips screw and a nut that is fixed and it's just loose enough, got to bring it back into frame, to move that back and forth. And the same thing for the draft control. So again, I don't necessarily have real concerns about those because, uh, well, you know, it shouldn't be heavily affected by the fire. If anything, it actually might just get a little bit more affixed because of the fire, but we'll see. All right, close the door, actually before I close the door over. The legs themselves, yeah, yeah, I guess it's picking up. The legs themselves, the attachment point to the stove is done with stainless steel rivets. Uh, strong enough? We'll see. It uh, it depends. We'll, well, I guess that's what the testing is all about. Would have preferred to see welding on, but you know, that's, that's, what, I, that's what came with the stove. Let's close the stove back up. Oh yeah, let's point out there is no seal around the door. So this is not intended for indoor use. This is only intended for well ventilated areas. Could you modify this? Maybe, I don't know that you would want to, but maybe you could modify it for use indoors. The legs, yeah, let's just focus in on the legs for a second here. So the legs fold, they seem to be snug enough in the short term. There is a little screw running through on both sides to hold it in place. That's not my point of concern. It's right here. You can see how this bracket that holds the leg in place is not actually welded. It is just, well, let's see. If I put a little bit of weight against this like that or press downwards while it's on the table, it does seem to want to spread the legs out some. Will that be an issue when it gets hot? Again, we'll see. Now, if someone is handy and able to do some welding, that would not be a hard fix at all. I may end up, well, it will depend on how it works out. I may end up, end up taking it to somebody who can just kind of weld those shut for me. And that's true on all four legs as well. Okay, I'm going to fold out the handles or the handle slash racks on either side because I have a comment here as well. So lightweight, yeah, they work. Fixed with pop rivets on the side. You can see the pop rivets here, uh, not heavy duty, but these are not intended for taking big pots or pans. They're not even advertised as that. The way they demonstrate them is as something you can lay wet gloves on and that type of thing. I would be cautious about putting any pots or pans on these racks. And there's two reasons for that. One, I mean, they're just wire. But the other thing is, they're already slanting outwards. They're, they're actually not level. That's level. 
and you can see a bit of a slant. So I actually did put a pan on this, uh, a cast iron fry pan on this, and it slid right off. So I'm not going to be using it for doing that. Could you modify these to be a little stronger so that you could put something on the sides? Probably a couple things. One, you may want to see if you can bend these to get an upward slope to it to account for the weight on top. And I suppose if I could put a stick or something and hold it up on either side if I wanted to use it that way. So I just wanted to point that out as well. Now, the other thing, of course, is the plate in the center here. So let me tip the stove forward. Once I close the door, that is. All right, this hole right in the center of the top plate, it's advertised as something you can put a, a pot over directly, so it's directly and exposed to the flame. Yeah, okay, we're going to give that a try. We'll see how that works out. I'm not so sure that it's even necessary. The top of the stove should get plenty of plenty hot to use for boiling water or frying up eggs and bacon, whatever else that you want to do. But that would give you some more intense heat in the short term. Here's my concern. A couple of things. One, how easy would this be to lose in transport? So you're going to have to take extra care not to lose this because if you do, then you're going to be obliged. You're going to have to put something on top of this every time you use the stove. Uh, the other thing is, will it leak? Will it smoke? I mean, there's a small hole right in the center. It's about the 16th of an inch. That's not going to produce a whole lot of smoke, but I guess the, the question is, is will it leak around its outside? At leak smoke, that is. Well, Brett, that's something we're going to be looking for. It is pretty flush and it is pretty tight. It doesn't move inside, so it may be tight enough that it does not leak. All right, I'm going to turn the stove around so that you can see the attachment point for the uh, chimney. So it is screwed on. Four places. Appears to be very solid. Now this is not a large diameter chimney. It is only what? Just a two and a 2.4 inches. So it's not a very large diameter one, but it should be sufficient to allow it enough smoke to run up the chimney. Again, something we'll see in a few minutes time. All right, what are the last two things that I want to show you here? Here's the damper. Now the damper doesn't give you 100% closure and there's no need for that anyway. You're only trying to reduce the amount of, of smoke going up the chimney, not eliminate it. So you get a you know, fair amount of coverage there with the damper and it works, stays in place like it's supposed to. So that seems to be uh, designed well enough. We'll see that in a few minutes. Uh, I have some concerns about the spark arrestor. They're not deal breakers. They're just things to be aware of. One, I don't know why it has to be pushed down on top. That just means any snow or rain is going to rest there and maybe accelerate a little bit of rusting. It would have been nice if it was domed upwards, but okay, no big deal. My only concern with the spark arrestor is the size of the holes themselves. They're quite big. They're almost half an inch in diameter. And, uh, you know, it depends. If you're using this and it's well clear of your tent, maybe, and you're not using softwood, maybe you won't get sparks or embers big enough to fly out of them to cause damage, and maybe you will. But if you're closer to your tent and you're using softwood and it's a nylon tent, uh, yeah, I think you could actually have sparks come out through those large holes. Likely what I'm going to be doing is adding some mesh around the outside of this that I can hold on with a... Uh, pipe clamp to, to keep it on and uh, just to get a little bit more safety. Oh, there's one more thing that I should mention is not included with this is there is no guy oak points. There's nothing that would allow you to put run three wires or ropes out to the ground to give it some extra stability and heavy winds. I think there's an easy fix to that and that's just another one of those clamps, those pipe clamps around the outside with some split rings. So that's likely something I'm going to do as well. All right, just before we go outside and do a test with this stove, I just want to point out this is not a review. Really, it's just an introduction to this stove and a first burn to see how it fares out with that. We're going to get a really good hot fire in this. We're going to see what effect that has on the stove, if any. Once it cools off, we'll come in. We'll take another closer look at this. I cannot give you a full review until I get some more time on this, obviously. Okay, I think it's time to get outside. So I am in my backyard getting ready to test the fit and hot wood stove. It is just around zero today. Quite windy out here in the backyard, so I'm hoping that you'll be able to hear me. I'm trying to shield the microphone from the wind, and it is snowing. 
ever so slightly, but just very, very light snow. So I guess the thing to do first is to get the stove assembled. By the way, I did try on those rubber gloves, these things, and uh, yeah, okay. I think I'll use them or give them to my wife for gardening gloves. I don't think they're what you want to be using. Even these leather gloves that I have here will protect my hands, but they're not a thick insulated one, so probably better to have that. So let's, I think I'll leave the racks uh, folded up just for the time being so they don't get in the way. Start pulling everything out. It's going to be a bit noisy. Alright, so that's the one with the damper. That'll go on first. And there's the one with the spark arrestor. When storing this, the fire grate actually goes in upside down, so it just lays a little tiny flatter in the bottom of the stove. By the way, I don't think I mentioned this while we were indoors. This is basically, looks like a cake rack or a cookie rack. Maybe a little bit heavier, but not by much. I guess two things here. One, we'll see how it stands up to the heat. Two, if it doesn't stand up, doesn't look like it'd be all that hard to replace. So I'm gonna put it back in so that the little uh, feet, or whatever you wanna call them, it to the ground. All right, so first thing, let's finish assembling the stove. Damper. I think what I'll do is put the rest of the sections all together. Put them on top. You know what? I think I will be modding this after the fact with some type of guy outlines. As I mentioned, I think a, a pipe clamp of some type with some split rings will probably do the trick. Okay, let's get this fire going. I'm going to throw in some birch bark. Mostly because I have it. I do have fire starters, but what's wrong with using birch bark when you have it, right? And maybe one more piece. And I have a little bit of splits. I gotta split myself down some more wood. The wood that I have is wood that I've had around the house for a while. It is mostly maple split down. And I was just a little afraid when I cut it that it wasn't gonna fit in, but it just fits in. So that's good. All right, get the lighter out. Light some birch bark up. That's uh, going to take a second to catch. My little splits are not all that little, but they are dry, so I expect they will work just fine. And mostly pine, so that'll catch on very quickly as well. Oh, are we open? We are now. Although, what a difference, right? I accidentally left the damper in the shut position and it was backing out the smoke. Once I open that damper though, you can probably see that drawing. And I do have smoke coming out of the top. I'll make sure that picks up on the camera. A little slow to take off. It's starting to catch on. I think I'll close the door and see how well it drafts that way. And it did make a difference having the door closed so that the draft is pulling in uh, directly underneath to the bottom of the wood. In fact, I can start to hear the roar inside that you like to hear when a wood stove really takes off. So I think what I'll do now is just cut away for a few minutes, really get this thing cranking, and then we'll come back. So the stove's been going for about 10 minutes now, wide open. As you can see, I've got the uh, draft open wide. It's roaring nicely. A couple of observations right off of the top. I'm not sure it's picking up on camera. I may have to try another angle. but. There does seem appear to be some smoke leaking out around the door, and strangely enough, out around the uh, glass window uh, holder there. Uh, not constantly, but there, you can probably saw that whiff of it coming out. Seems to be if there's a little bit of a backdraft, that's when it uh, 
seems to smoke out of there now. Now here's an interesting place. So let me just move the camera around a little bit and maybe bring it in a little closer. That's the label on the side of, of course, the manufacturing label. That's the only thing that appears to be off-gassing or smoking. So while the stove body itself does not appear to be have any smoke or any discoloration or anything happening to it, that little panel is. I could smell it and then I looked around and I could see it as you can turning colors there. That's fine. Once that's done, it's done. It won't happen again, of course. And one more thing. I think I can come in a little closer yet. The little hole for that plate on top again, is also puffing smoke. Now, we're not talking about a lot. We're just talking about a little. Whether or not it's an issue what is uh, something that you'll have to decide for yourself. I don't see the top one as being much of an issue. But the smoke coming out around the door is a little bit concerning if you're in, inside of a tent. I'll come back, maybe I can get a better angle. Mostly it's the smoke coming off of that label and that'll burn off in a few minutes time. Now I do have this thing roaring hot. So uh, that's of course what I wanted to do, get a really hot fire going. So I'll let it go for a while longer, stack it full of wood, get it really, really hot and we'll see how it uh, fares out. So the stove's been running 45 minutes now. I put in quite a bit of wood. Decided to open the door and let it run with the door open for a few minutes, draw extra air. That's a pretty sight in there, you know. I'm not sure if the microphone's picking it up, but it's just roaring. Working very well, but uh, time will tell. So I think it'll run an hour, an hour and a half. I'll let it cool down and we'll see what we can do about wrapping this video up. All right, we're back inside and I'm ready to give you my observations after that first burn of the stove. So right off of the top, the stove worked. It just, it worked just the way it was intended to. It uh, created a nice hot fire inside. It was easy to get going. And once I realized I had the damper closed, it started to draw like a champ and it, it uh, just lit right up, produced a lot of heat. That's what you want from a stove, right? The other thing I noticed right off of the top is the fact that this coating that's being referred to as a titanium coating did not off-gas. It has no discoloration. It has no signs of heat damage to it whatsoever. It does exactly what it's supposed to do. So I was impressed with that. And this being a carbon steel, not a stainless steel stove, it's important to have that coating on the outside to prevent it from rusting. How it will work over the long term, that's what we're going to see. The only off-gassing or smoking that occurred was where the uh, uh, manufacturing uh, sign was affixed on the side, as you saw. Now, airflow is everything in a stove like this. And uh, there's a couple of things. One is that the pipe is only of a relatively small diameter. And I'll mention uh, why I say that in, in a moment. And it, the other thing is that the the draft control is done by this fan-shaped mechanism here and you need a good airflow in order to get complete combustion inside of a stove. Now uh, I see evidence that that was not the case here and what it is is on the inside of the stove it got really really sooty. I won't be able to show you any better than it is right now. Okay, Mark, yeah, sure, a stove is going to get sooty from a fire. No surprise there. No, of course not, there isn't. It's, it's expected that you're going to be sooty and dirty on the inside. This just seems to be a little bit more than I thought would occur. If I had a complete clean combustion, I wouldn't expect to see this level of soot inside. Now, the best evidence of that is this is the glass right here. This is the glass, and it's completely sooted and blackened over. I don't know that that should occur. I think the whole point of that glass is that it does not uh, soot over like that. Is this a big issue? I don't think so. I'll, I'll tell you my thoughts on it. Um, the stove, the fact that it's getting sooty may be evidence of incomplete combustion, and that's not a problem as long as it doesn't uh, collect and create a lot of creosote buildup in the stove pipe. So all I'm saying here is that watch for that. And I look down each of the sections of the stovepipe and it is sooty. Um, I'm not so much that I'm gonna clean it out yet, but I'm gonna keep an eye on it to make sure that it doesn't start to restrict and constrict the pipe down to a point where no air is going through or in fact the creosote uh, lights up. So uh, that's, that's just something to be aware of. I can clean the, front, uh, the glass off and it'll operate. Now, a couple of things that I wanna point out as well. Uh, number one, the 
draft control here, I found a few times it would get stuck and I'd have to actually give it a bit of a push to free it up, but it did so. It's not like it got so hot that it wouldn't move at all. It's just metal, it swelled a little bit or, or expanded a little bit with the heat. Got a little tight, but once it moved, it moved uh, fine. The big issues that I see are smoke coming out of the stove in places you don't want smoke coming out of the stove. The plate on top, the small little hole, little puffs of smoke coming out, I don't see that as a big issue. In fact, put a pot on top of it and, you're, and you'll and eliminate that issue. The places where I see this as a bit of an issue, and again, this is relative, you'll have to decide how big an issue it is for you, is across the top of the door. I had mentioned that smoke was rising from this area here, and I thought, and I'm not still not sure it wasn't the case, that smoke was coming out around the glass right here. I could be wrong about that. It could have been all coming out from the top of the door. Now, looking at it now, I see something. I was not aware if it was there before I burnt the stove or not. It's, I just didn't notice it. And that is the top of the stove, the door, seems to be warped out a little bit. That or it was previously bent prior to uh, me lighting the stove up. The best I can do to show you this is that when I push on this corner here, I can move the top of the door in about an eighth of an inch. And if I do so, it comes much closer to the stove and I think that might have, might help dampen down any smoke or prevent any smoke from leaking out through here. Uh, not a big deal, just something to be aware of. I am gonna try and see if I can twist the stove door a little bit to make it a little bit more tight there. But yeah. The other concerns I had, things like the legs splaying out because of the way they're affixed, uh, I see no evidence of, the, of that. This is still the first burn. How it'll be in a year from now after multiple burns, well, that's what I'll bring back at some point to share with you. Okay, uh, those are my thoughts on the fit and hot wood stove. I think it is a good budget wood stove. It is a good starter wood stove and for some people it's the only wood stove they'll ever need or ever want. I think this is really great for somebody on a budget. Yes, there are better stoves out there but they cost considerably more. It's also a great stove for someone who doesn't mind doing a little bit of maintenance and maybe modifications and DIY adaptations to it to make it work a little bit better. Like maybe you do have to bend this down. Maybe you do have to add some type of a clamp around the chimney so that you can guy it out. Small things like that. Things pretty much anybody can do. Okay. That's enough for this stove. Again, I'll remind you this is not a full review. This is a preview on a first burn for the stove. But what I'd ask you to do now is if you have any thoughts or comments or suggestions, please put them in the comments section below. All the information I have, including the links to where you can purchase this stove, that will be in the video description. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.